Uh, everything we read is written by humans. Everything. Everything about witches, ghosts, werewolves, vampires, fairies, demons, and angels was written by human beings. And yes, everything written about gods, including your favorite ones, was written by humans. I think everybody understands this. We even talk about it. Chaucer wrote this. Shakespeare wrote that. The Apostle Peter penned the other thing, and Paul penned something different. All humans. That's who writes what we read. So what should that tell us? That we should take what we read with a grain of salt, right? That we should ponder on what we read, look for other views on the subject, use critical thinking to try to determine whether we believe what we read and how much importance to give to it. Obviously, much of what we read might be true. Some might be partially true. Or all might be lies or, or simply stories or myths or legends. We know people lie. We also know they make mistakes. This isn't something new. Ancient people were human too and subject to being liars or making errors. And if we don't have the original copies of the writings of someone, we know that those who copied the original might also have made mistakes or even changed what was written because they believed the author was wrong or they wanted to skew the meaning of the text to fit their preconceived ideas. I know there can be a problem with communication. I don't judge people for accidentally getting something wrong. People tell untruths by accident. But when they have ulterior motives, they might tell us a bald-faced lie. And y'all, religious people have ulterior motives. They have a reason to lie to us just as politicians do. We know for a fact, as an example, that the church fathers and other Christian leaders deliberately lied. They admitted it. In his introduction to Treatise on the Priesthood, Chrysostom wrote that the principle that deceit for a righteous end is often salutary and justifiable. And in book two, he noted that it is possible then to make use of deceit for a good purpose, or rather that in such a case it ought not to be called deceit, but a kind of good management worthy of all admiration. Jerome wrote that it must be the duty of the rulers of states at times to tell lies, either to baffle the enemy or to benefit their country and the citizens. On the other hand, to those who do not know how to make a good use of falsehood, the practice should be altogether prohibited. <laughs> Jerome also quoted Origen as saying that it's sometimes good to lie. These are, according to Jerome, the words of Origen. He says that to God, falsehood is shameful and useless, but to men it is occasionally useful. But a man on whom necessity imposes the responsibility of lying is bound to use very great care and to use falsehood as he would a stimulant or a medicine and strictly to preserve its measure. This origin wrote, and none of us can deny it, and he wrote it in the book which he addressed to the perfect, his own disciples. His teaching is that the master may lie, the disciple must not. Inference from this is that the man who is a good liar and without hesitation sets before his brethren any fabrication which rises into his mouth shows himself to be an excellent teacher. And why wouldn't these people think it's okay to lie? The Bible tells us it's okay. The Old Testament plainly says that the scribes were liars. Jeremiah 8.8 8, ASB states, How do you say, We are wise, and the law of Jehovah is with us? But behold, the false pen of the scribes hath wrought falsely. The scribes wrote falsely. They lied. At least that's the opinion of the prophet Jeremiah. Was he lying or did the scribes lie? Doesn't matter, does it? If either lied, then the Bible isn't inerrant. But the scribes aren't the only liars in the Bible. And lying is presented as a good thing when people obviously did it in the Old Testament. We have several examples of this. In Exodus 1, 15 through 22, we read that the Israelite midwives failed to follow the dictates of the Pharaoh to kill the boy babies they delivered to Hebrew women. 
when questions were questioned, they lied and said that the Hebrew women were so strong and healthy, they delivered before the midwives could arrive on the scene. Why did the midwives lie? The Bible tells us <laughs> they feared Yahweh. They lied because they feared Yahweh. In Exodus 3, 21 through 22, we find Yahweh himself telling people to lie. Yahweh tells the women of Israel to borrow jewelry from the Egyptian women, but it wasn't really borrowing. The plan was to keep the jewelry and run away with it. The plan was to steal and lie by saying the women were simply borrowing. Yahweh clearly approved of this lie since he commanded it. In Joshua 2, 1 through 7, the prostitute Rahab lied and said the Israelite spies had gone one way when in fact they'd taken a different route. She was praised for this lie in the New Testament. Prophet Elisha lied in 2 Kings 16, I mean 6, 18 through 20. He asked Yahweh to blind some people, and Yahweh answered his prayer. <laughs> Maybe that's why our prayers aren't answered. Maybe we should stop praying for good to befall others and instead ask Yahweh to bring evil upon them. He apparently listens to those prayers. Anyway, Elisha lied and told the blind men he'd take them where they wanted to go. Instead, he took them where they didn't want to go. This was Elisha, y'all, who had double the spirit that Elijah had had. People filled with the spirit. Lie. Jael lied to Sisera, telling him to come into her tent without fear that he would be safe there. Was he? No, Jael murdered him by driving a nail into his temple. But what did the good prophetess Deborah think about this deception? She said, Blessed above women shall Jael be. Blessed shall she be above women in the tent. In 1 Samuel 16, 1 through 5, we find the story of Samuel's fear in meeting King Saul because he thought Saul would kill him. But Yahweh wanted Samuel to go so he could anoint king, David as king. So Yahweh, yes, the God who cannot lie, told Samuel to lie and say he was coming in peace to offer a sacrifice to Yahweh. So Samuel lied as Yahweh instructed him. In fact, he used his faithfulness to his God as a lying excuse, just as the Hebrew midwives did. In 1 Kings 22, 23, 23, we find good old Yahweh sitting on his throne, surrounded by the host of heaven. Yahweh was confused. He didn't know what to do, so he asked his counselors for help. He asked who could go persuade Ahab so that he might fall by the sword. The angels or other gods or whatever the counselors of Yahweh were had various suggestions. Finally, one spirit came and said he knew how to do it. Yahweh has town. The spirit said, he'd go be a lying spirit in the mouths of the prophets of Ahab. Yahweh thought that was an excellent idea. He was like, yeah, yeah, go do that. That'll surely work. <laughs> so Yahweh put a lying spirit in the prophet's mouth so Ahab would be deceived. Like father, like son, I reckon, because Jesus also lied. In John 7, 1 through 10, Jesus told his disciples to go on up to the Feast of Tabernacles, but he wasn't going just yet. However, once they left, Jesus went too. He just went up secretly so nobody would know. Yes, Jesus lied. Y'all know good and well that if anybody else did this, you'd consider it a lie. I mean, you know, unless it was Donald Trump. In 1 Corinthians 9, 19 through 23, we see Paul lying. He didn't come right out and tell a bald-faced lie, but he pretended to be something he wasn't. To Jews, he acted as if he were a Jew. Anyone under the law, he pretended to be under the law. He feigned weakness when he was among weak people. Paul said he became all things to all men. I guess that's why, when with James and the elders of, in Jerusalem who believed in keeping the law, Paul even offered a sacrifice as if this would still be efficacious, and even though it was, it seems to me, a slap in the face of Jesus. We know people lie. As we've seen, they sometimes even admit to doing so deliberately. When we read the words in the Bible, again, words written by fallible human beings, and the words of those pushing it on us as the truth, 
who boldly tell us they'll gladly lie to make us believe what they write. What should we do? I don't know about you, but I think it's wise to ignore anything spoken or written by such people. Thank you all. Bye.